If you're a sales leader, one of the challenges that you have these days is navigating the hybrid workforce. We have team members here, we have team members in person, we have team members all over the place. How do you ensure that they still get the same level of coaching, guidance, and help they need to strive and to succeed? Well, in this episode, we're going to tell you what you should do. At least Brian will. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast here on TSC TV on YouTube. My name is Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we're going to talk to my friend Brian. And Brian, he's doing some amazing things. And one of the things that he's doing is learning how to continue to expand and to develop and grow his workforce. When we were talking about this, He gave me so many great insights, and I feel right now you as a sales leader or as a sales rep, you want to figure out how you can best navigate these waters. Brian is our person to do so. He is the co-founder of an amazing organization called Ambition. He's going to tell you a little bit more about that right now, but also give you some insights, key takeaways that you can take and apply right now, whether you are on the sales leadership side or you're the sales rep. Ooh, money in the bank. Let's go listen to Brian. Brian, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Donald. Thanks for having me. How are you? Man, I can't complain, bro. It's another day in paradise, and I'm excited to chat with you and to to pick your brain a little bit to get some more insights from you. Because especially when it comes down to this topic of looking for and hiring new people, bringing them on board, getting new salespeople, there's still some... We got we inherited some new challenges after the pandemic, and I want to be able to talk to you about how do we navigate this hybrid sales workforce, and uh, especially when we bring new people on. Um, but before we dive into that fun stuff, Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you, man, and what you do? Yeah, so I am Brian Trouchold. I'm the COO and co-founder of Ambition. Uh, you can find us at ambition.com. We're a sales management platform. We help uh, coach, or we help sales leaders coach, develop, and motivate their sales teams. Uh, I got into this from, from being one of those reps and then ultimately being a leader who really struggled with that. I, uh, I sold for, at the time, one of the 20 largest companies in the world uh, 10 years ago, and then I moved into logistics and sold there in a very high-velocity, high pace environment. And I saw firsthand uh, how difficult it was, especially for, I think, younger generations coming into sales to uh, – to stay motivated, to stay engaged, to um, you know, feel like they were part of the bigger organization and the goals. And uh, my co-founders and I, you know, we set out to solve that about eight years ago, almost, almost eight years ago now with Ambition. And it's uh, how I ended up here, man. It's been a really fun journey. Well, congratulations on that, man. It looks like some amazing things that you guys are doing. So it, it, obviously you can see there's no reason for me to doubt why we should uh, bring you on. Like, you know, we, we had to bring you on um, to, to have you come and share some of your insights on this. Um, Appreciate that. The, the first thing I want to talk about, though, I know you and I were talking before we launched this episode, like what are some of those, what, what should we look for? They're probably like, we can go on for hours, but we only have 20 minutes here. What are the top three things that you feel um, that we need to be aware of, especially right now, hiring new people in this, and navigating this uh, remote work environment or this, this, this blended workforce? And then we can take a few minutes for each of them. Does that, how does that sound? Yeah, absolutely. I think that sounds great. Um, I'll list them out and then we can go to each of them. But, um, and we're dealing with these ourselves. So I think more than ever, you know, everyone's kind of in the same boat, whether you're a huge company or you're a a company of 60 people like Ambition, uh, you're dealing with these things and and, uh, COVID slash remote work slash the future of work. It's kind of equally evening the playing field at least. Um, But one is it's, it's incredibly hard and maybe more important than ever to build a strong culture, build a connected organization and especially a sales team so so building culture uh to me is number one uh number two is how do you um how do you continually engage uh your workforce especially your sales team uh, because i think everyone in sales uh whatever generation they're from they, they know that you have to hold people on the sales team accountable um, it's a very metric driven world it's a very performance driven world and uh our folks are working for from uh, different type of situations. They're distracted uh, or they could be distracted. There's a lot of options to, to do when you're at home. And the last part, I think, um, that kind of goes into both of these is 
uh, people are craving uh, development. They're craving, I think, uh, coaching and investment from their employers, their their sales leaders, their their team leads more than ever. And in the remote or hybrid world, it's uh, it's not it doesn't work the way it used to. A lot of the rituals we had around management, development, coaching people uh, were largely driven by in person. So I think all those things have been kind of thrown into the the mix and, and they're all organizations are trying to figure out how do we, how do we solve for all, th- all three of those things? Sure. Well, I mean, you sure got to cut out for you. And I think uh, all of us do with this, but the first one building culture, um, we are a growing company as well. We have for a, for a long time as a solo podcaster and, and someone doing a consulting firm, it was just me and, you know, had a couple remote team members. Then we started to grow. We have about 14 of us on deck right now. Um, awesome. you know, doing things. Thanks, man. Um, with the podcast production side, as well as with TSE and the sales training firm, I would love to get from you, especially when it comes towards a sales side, like what are some of the things that people get wrong when it comes towards building culture? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, even going back pre, pre, uh, remote work, pre hybrid work, I think there's this, uh, it's really easy to get into like the Michael Scott type of like, <laughs> I'm going to give out high fives. I'm going to make loud noises when I walk into the office. It's kind of, it's almost a meme, right? Like it's, I've been in organizations and I've certainly uh, visited companies as, as part of ambition where you walk in and you can tell the culture is, uh, is fake or, or it's mm. like for show or whatever. And, or, or it's just ultra bravado and, and the people are kind of rolling their eyes. And um, that, that is not how you get people motivated, especially I think, you know, maybe younger people or, or sophisticated sellers, maybe who are really advanced in their careers. Like you're not going to yeah. get people excited about that. So, you know, it's key to, uh, to be authentic when you're recognizing people to, I think really connect achievements and milestones that people are one striving for and, and two, hopefully achieving to, uh, to the real goals. Like I, I see this all the time where there's, there's work for the sake of work or there's, um, you know, activity for the sake of activity. And it's not clearly, um, it's not clearly defined as how that's going to affect someone's success or how that's going to affect someone contributing to the team. Um, and remotes made that even harder. So, you know, I'm I'm sure Donald, you're familiar with people who are using, uh, you know, whether it was a leaderboard on the wall in their office back in the day or a whiteboard or, or, or man, like I, when I was in sales may date me, but like there was, my manager had a gong on her desk and like, if you do something (laughs) great, you go like physically ring that gong. Right. And like that, that stuff that was normal. Uh, everyone had that stuff. So, you know, now whether that was good or bad, like all of that stuff is harder. So, uh, one of the things that we find all the time that, that, people are missing out on the culture. And I, and I talked to a sales rep recently. He's a, he's 23, a sales development rep, I should say 23. He's in his first job. He's doing great. He's in an apartment with four, four other people. And like no one in his apartment knows what he's doing. He's just plugging away in his room, making dials. If he doesn't get any type of like visibility and recognition from his manager or his, his team leads or a, a VP of sales on a, daily but definitely weekly basis it sucks right like he's just in there grinding making cold calls probably getting a lot of no's and uh we've got to figure out ways we've got to deliver solutions so that a person like that who's working super hard um feels that they're having an impact and feels that the team is recognizing their hard work and recognizing their performance and their achievements and so that's one of the things we work really hard especially with organizations at scale because you can imagine if you have a sales development team of much less, you know, say five is hard, but if you've got 500 people, which many of our customers do, then you've got a lot of people you need to keep feeling it and feeling like the, the momentum is there and feeling like they're being seen and their performance is being, uh, you know, hopefully recognized and, and hopefully that's contributing to their career path. I, lo- I love the idea where you said it with the genuine. I was trying to see where you're going to go with that. And I think there's the w- what came to my mind. There are probably tons of different things that a manager can do to be able to show that genuine care for someone or Absolutely. just to give that that shout out. In even if it is in the Slack community, like, you know, um, Brian, uh, uh, listen to your recent call the other day with so and so. Great job, um, team. Check out Brian call for a great way to, you know, uh, land the appointment in the midst of 
difficulty. <laughs> you know what I mean? So but, uh, yeah, d that recognition in front of your peers, and obviously you can't do that for everyone, but it just, e even if a, a VP, like you said, was send a note um, mm -hmm. or send a personal email or even send a, like a video email to you, that's like, that would be, you know, I feel great. Be like, dang, man, you know, <laughs> Lisa took the time. I know she's busy and she sent me a two minute video talking about my deal. Dang. Right. And the whole team saw it. I mean, I, I know you love stories and we have a thing that we're doing internally. <laughs> it, it's cool that our product powers it, but we call it the streak pot. So here at Ambition, you know, it's it's pretty difficult to set like four outbound meetings in a day. Just just mm -hmm. like like a, as a cold outbound from our sales development team. So we have a pot that every day that uh, that does not happen, money goes into this pot. So, you know, it's class. Like we got all kinds of games like this. But, um, you know, I think it's about $20 a day. And uh, when people set more than three meetings or when they set their third meeting, that notification is going to the whole company. So 60 people around the country <laughs> are seeing that, like, someone's on the cusp, right? And, like, someone has the opportunity to get it. And it will tell them, like, hey, there's there's – been 10 days, $200 are in the pot. And all of a sudden, you know, we have these young people who half of our team is, has hired within, uh, since February. So within the last hundred days, like the whole company, including our CEO, including, you know, the head of, of people operations, the engineering team, everyone's seeing and rooting for our SDR team. And that's kind of the culture that I think a lot of places are not feeling right now unless if they're going you know they're remote and they don't have any type of, of tool set that's that's helping them bridge that gap bro you just gave me an idea so we're gonna try that <laughs> it's fun man like what's crazy is that we've now beaten the streak pot and yeah. had people do five and then was was cool and like credit to our team like this is not my idea i take zero zero credit People are like, hey, I'll Venmo you 20. Like, you did five? Like, that's crazy, man. Like, let me Venmo you or, or uh, you know, let me do something for you, send you coffee. Like, Dang. it's just a cool way to get the whole group connected, whether they're in sales or not in sales. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, and I'm even thinking something for my podcast team as well. Like, uh, this yeah. is fun. I, I love that. So building that culture. Guys, if you want to get some more, um, make sure you hit up Brian. Um, if you're watching a video, you can see some of the information there pop up at the screen. Connect with him on LinkedIn because he has some more ideas on that. But Brian, let's talk about the engagement factor. We talked about culture, building culture, but how do you go about building that engagement continually, especially when, again, this idea of the remote community? Yeah, I mean, Donald, you and I were talking just before we joined, but like, those same people, and even us, like, you know, we're, we're probably of the generation who has things like this, but there's there's no shortage of, of uh, distractions in our our homes apartments wherever uh, you're in beautiful South Florida there's distractions everywhere whatever you want to do um, you know we've got people who have a they've got Netflix right there they've got an Xbox over here and they're supposed to be doing demos or, or creating pipeline right like what we all hope they're doing as a great seller or sales development rep in our work um, and what we find a lot of times is that you can use the culture and you can use the fun side to hook them, but you also have to hold them accountable. And I think of accountability less as like the, um, the stick side of carrot and stick. I think more of it, like giving people a really clear plan, a really clear path that like, if you want to, um, if you want to hit this goal, if you want to hit quota or you want to hit your monthly target or whatever it is, let's try to back into what, what the leading things that are the activities and the leading indicators that you've got to do just mathematically, unless you're just a complete all-star and you're shooting, you know, 70% from the field or whatever, but like, <laughs> here's, here's what it kind of looks like. And then give those people some, some, uh, some, some easy to use really simple tools to hold themselves accountable. Because I believe that the individual is more effective at holding themselves accountable than a, than a manager, if you will. Yeah. Um, and we think about that as like, an Apple watch or a, or a Peloton or, or a Fitbit that's kind of saying like, Hey, you're almost there or Hey, you're supposed to get to 10,000 steps today. Like give you a little nudge cause you're off track. Um, and that's something that we do in our product. And we also advocate because, you know, I think over the last 15 months or 16 months, those distractions are, they're easy to give into, right? They're just, <laughs> you mentioned Netflix right away. Like, yeah, I, I go in, I'm bad about shows too. Like, I'm like, what happens on the next episode? I can just knock one out real quick. And then I'm like, it's just counting down the ticker, right? It's like 15 yeah. seconds. The next one's going to start. Like you got to have something that helps you make the, make a good decision that, that gets you back on the, on the grind and back on what you're focused on. 
Yeah, it's like, I'm going to take my lunch. I'm going to take 30 minutes to watch an episode. I'll watch 30 minutes of this episode. Oh. Like, dang, this. Let me just, it's let me easy. just finish it up. It, it goes for it's... 45 minutes, just 15 minutes over. <laughs> right. It's hard. It's really hard. I mean, you know, I think that's why there's, this is not unique to ambition. I think there's a lot of um, things in our life like that that are trying to make us make us uh, or give us the opportunity to make the right decisions, I should say. And, yeah. and I think that, uh, you know, we're trying to certainly help as far as the engagement, which part of it is the fun and, and putting automatic alerts into Slack or sending alerts to email that ideally have more than just one person involved. But also, I think the subtle nudge to an individual to say, hey, you're, uh, you know, you're 10 off of your target of, you know, new contacts added today or you're you're one meeting away from being in the lead for this week those are the little things that help people get over that hump where they can they can fight back the distractions yeah oh man so so good so you guys just another engagement idea there check uh take uh take advantage of that and i guess that's something that's built into your your software yeah absolutely yeah. so those those kind of uh leading indicators the short-term and mid-term objectives and the outcomes those are all built into ambition and, and then we help the, the team hold themselves and hold them, their, uh, their reps accountable to it. Boom. Love it, man. All right. Now, finally, retaining and developing. Um, average rep stays in a position for 18 months. I'm really curious to see what happened during this COVID, what the numbers look like. But before COVID, it was like 18 to 24 months, uh, SDR, BDR, staying in roll. Um, maybe they matriculate into a different parts of the company or maybe they go somewhere else. But um, altogether, I, I'm, I'm again, I don't know any data on that, but how I, how can we go about doing that, retaining our folks and keeping them engaged, developing them? It's huge. It's huge. Like the development side uh, and the coaching side, I think, is harder than ever. And you, met, those stats are great because I'm actually really worried. And I think there's a couple articles that started coming out. I want to say it was on Bloomberg, but I may be, I may, I may be misremembering that about how many people are, um, are leaving their roles that are becoming less remote friendly. Uh, like yeah. as their companies try to go back into the office or create some guidelines around it, they're, <laughs> they're opting out, uh, they're self, a self attriting out. That's really scary as a talent leader, as a company leader, because, um, as I'm, you see right now with your 14 person team, you're probably investing so much into having that person be productive, having an impact, becoming part of the, becoming part of the culture. Um, when they leave for whatever reason, it, that's not because their performance is not good. It's extremely painful. Um, and I think that we see this broadly speaking is a lot of the, I called them the rituals that kept people maybe, um, maybe glued to the organization, whether that was a great relationship with their manager, seeing people in the office, uh, going out to lunch with coworkers, whatever it is, like the things that they loved about wherever they worked before. Um, a lot of that had to do with a good manager relationship. If the manager relationship coaching relationship is not good, they would leave earlier. Mm -hmm. And the rituals around it have been kind of broken by remote. I mean, it's, it's great to catch up with, whoever reports to you in Slack, it's great to uh, check in on a rep or someone on your team in Slack or Teams or Zoom, whatever. But you've got to have, I think, a little bit more proactive and a more structured approach to that. And that's something that we believe in really strongly. And so um, we've been we've been advocating for, we, we support this in our product, but having consistent data-driven um, kind of scheduled conversations with people uh, that, that are all stored so that if you're having a one-on-one -on -one with a rep, what used to happen, or this used to be a, a thing that I did, I would do like the drive by, like the walk by, I see Donald sitting, you know, somewhere in the office and I'm like, Hey man, I'm going to grab coffee. You want to grab, you want to come with me? You want to like spend 10 minutes walking and talking? And that would be like, to me, a good coaching opportunity to say like, how are things going? You feel good? What's, what's in your way? Anything I can help with? Well, those are kind of they're, they're less meaningful now that that's like in Slack. It's like, Hey man, what's up? Everything good. And you're like, I'm on a, I'm on a call right now. Go, I'm doing a podcast. Can't talk to you. Um, so we've got to make time to be really proactive about it. And in doing that, we call these coaching programs. You've got to keep track of all the things that are going on. So when you show up to the conversation, it's not like, Tell me about what did we talk about last time, Donald? I can't remember. I did I did mm -hmm. eight of these this week. It's got to be like, hey, I remember last time you told me you were trying to hire a new per per person for editing, or I told I remember uh, last week you did a podcast about this thing. Like you can start with some information that's 
real and, and tactical. And then at the end of it, you could say, hey, let's make an action plan for this. I want you to get me on a call with uh, this person you're trying to hire. I'll, I'll help you out. Or let me get on the, the next um, pricing proposal with this prospect we have at a, at a big company. And you can set those things. And, and then the next time we'll see if you delivered or not. You'll see if we actually check those things off the list. And so, you know, the, the coaching can't just be, hey, one off ad hoc what's going on. It's got to be part of a bigger narrative. And then we see the most successful organizations are doing this, you know, with ambition or, or some, some other tools as well. Like, let's see if they're impacting metrics. So let's tie a specific KPI to the coaching, like how much pipeline is being created or the opportunity win rate or, or something that, that matters obviously to the org um, so that the, the questions you talk about, the uh, the deals you look at in the meeting, the data that we that we automatically surface, it's relevant. It's relevant to the conversation, and both parties feel like in thirty minutes, forty five minutes, sixty minutes, some progress is being made, more so than just kind of a let's talk for thirty minutes and let's just see what's going on. Bro, love that love that concept, and uh, there's nothing more genuine than. If you're a busy person, again, going back to the leader idea, and you took the time to know or remember something about me, it doesn't, you, yeah. you can keep all the money in the world. But the fact is, the, I guess, the, in the bank, the, uh, the emotional bank. Yes, <laughs> we talk about this point. all the time, man. Yeah, I love it. Keep <laughs> like, going, sorry. Yeah, no, you're good, man. But with that emotional bank account now, you've just made, like, that's, that's, that's gold right there. Like, Dave remembered that my kid, was sick and that mm-hmm. kept me up you know a couple weeks ago like dang like come on yeah like just that, that that you you would be endeared to me and i would probably be i'd probably want to go to battle for you and back um you know without armor <laughs> just that's the you tell me that's the risk and i think that organizations are going to start really running into this i think the the stats that you're talking about i think they're going to get really upside down in the next couple quarters because i think Bro. those things are just harder to do right now and it, yeah. and you don't if you're not seeing someone uh regularly if you're not keeping track of those notes if you got 8 10 14 people reporting to you it's just hard so you got to have yeah. some type of system to help you we we do it for customers why do we not do it for people who work with us right bro so true man <laughs> it's crazy it- and it's, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up with the customers. There's so many things that we do. You ever hear the thing like the shoemaker's kids have the worst shoes? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. I've talked to marketing companies and, you know, friends of mine and, you know, like even with our sales organization, the things that we do for our client as a consultancy, like mm-hmm. some of those things we could probably do better internally with our team as well. And uh, it's, you just always focus on the outside. But taking that simple idea, that having that for your team, for each of your team members, it's a brilliant, it's just, and it's simple. So, bro, if there's one major takeaway, one major piece of advice you want folks to walk away with today from all the things that we discussed, what's that major uh, advice? Yeah, I think, I think data-driven coaching, consistent coaching is the way of the future. And uh, it, you got to utilize some type of system, whether it's ambition or something else. I think it's going to help keep the people you, you want to have there. It's going to develop them. You're going to have more uh, happy, effective, productive employees, teammates, and uh, it's key right now because I think it's going to be this way for a while. Love it, man. If folks want to get in touch with you to con- connect with you, how did it go about doing so? Yeah, please come give me a shout out, ambition.com. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn, Brian Trouchold, or uh, occasionally on Twitter, B Trouchold. Brian, we'll go ahead and put those information in our show notes. Thanks so much for being on the show today, man. We appreciate you. Thank you, Donald. I appreciate it, man. Take care. That was Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go ahead and connect with him, you can find all of his detail below. He's he's really cool, dude. I mean, you can find all of his information on LinkedIn, just like straight up like a, you know, one of those individuals who's just like down to earth, outgoing, and you're going to get a chance to learn a lot from him. And also check out Ambition, some of the cool things that they're doing and see if it's something that you and your team could benefit from as well. You can find Brian again on LinkedIn. You can find all of his detail below. He's chilling over in Tennessee. But beyond that, do it as everywhere online and you can uh, learn a lot from him. He said he dabbles on Twitter as well, so you can find him there as well. We have all the links below. Now, speaking about dabbling, some of you may be dabbling with the offers that our sponsors are giving you. You're probably saying, well, Donald, you know, I don't know right now. I'm good. Maybe I'll try it later. Take advantage of it now. Take advantage of it. They're giving you offers. We've negotiated. We've worked with them so you can get something that can benefit you. Use it. 
because you're not going to find this deal anywhere else. Listen, I want you to succeed. I want you to thrive. I want you to be able to have great success. Most importantly, I want you to get those customers that you're looking for. I want you to know how to build the value. I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, man, I'm telling you, raise your level of thinking. Check out some of our sales mindset training program. I want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also, to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools, and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.